Hey guys, and welcome to the very first episode of The World Through Tiffany's Eyes. This is going to be a series about my visual impairment. This very first episode, I'm going to talk about basically the gist of everything. S stuff that I can see and I can't. And it's a lot easier for me to tell you the stuff that I can't really see, but I can tell you some of the things that I can. But in this series, I am going to basically cover a lot of things about my visual impairment. I'm going to show you some of the technology that helps me, the tools, the ways I cope, and give you like examples of things that I can and can't see, and just basically help understand me a little better, I guess. So this was actually inspired by an amazing friend of mine. Her name is Shani, also known as Educating Shani here on YouTube and also by some of my friends and Shani's Instafam. If you're a subscriber of Shani, you probably know who the Instafam is. I'll just let her explain, but anyway. Um, so this very first episode, like I said, I'm just gonna talk to you about some of the stuff that I can and can't see, and just basically give you the basics. So I was born with a visual impairment. So I've been visually impaired my entire life. I'm not totally blind, I can see a lot but I can't see, I also can't see a lot. So I would be considered legally blind, but I just I just tell people I'm visually impaired because I mean that, I think that pretty much sums it up. So one of the big things for me is I cannot read tiny print. So, you know, regular size font, I cannot read that unless I have something that enlarges it. I can't read cursive writing because it looks like scribble scrabble to me. And I think that's also probably where my visual impairment and my autism collide with each other. And I'm going to talk about that as well because there are some things where both of my disabilities collide with each other and make things even more complicated. But I also cannot read writing in pencil. It has to be in dark marker, like dark black or dark blue. It has to be really dark and it's got to be bold and enlarged. So let's say you're writing me a letter. Um, it's probably best, if you if you want to handwrite it, you should probably write it in dark marker. Don't write in cursive. Make sure your handwriting is legible for me. Um, and, you know, or if you want to type it up, you know, type it up in big letters. Although I do have technology that will enlarge it. However, this technology will not help me decipher cursive. So if you were to write me a letter or write me something that's really personal that you don't want other people to read, don't write to me in cursive, please. But a lot of times when I get a card in the mail or a letter in the mail, my grandparents will read it to me, especially if it's cursive. But yeah, for me, I much prefer dark handwriting with like a, a big marker or big, bold letters typed. And if I have to read something that's written in small print, I will read it underneath something called my closed circuit TV, which enlarges things on a big screen. And I can also set it to where I'm reading black on white or white on black, so I can basically reverse the color polarity. I also get similar colors mixed up. I can see colors. You know, I can see the rainbow, I can see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, all the, you know, I can see all the colors, but I get very similar looking colors mixed up, such as um, orange and pink, or it could be yellow and pink, depending on the shade of pink, or sometimes even red and pink can get confusing. It depends on the shade of pink. I sometimes get green and blue mixed up, or I'll get green and purple mixed up, or sometimes blue and purple. Like, it depends on the shade of the color. So, you know, sometimes it's like my mind just doesn't register. Is this blue? Is this purple? Is this green? I can't tell. Is this yellow? Is this really light pink? Is this brown? Is this um, kind of a, a weird shade of pink? I don't know. I can't tell. It's really hard for me to sometimes decipher colors, and a lot of times I also get really dark colors mixed up, because sometimes I can't tell if something is black or really, really, really dark blue, like navy blue. But I can see colors. I just get them mixed up. I basically call it being color dyslexic. I am also nearsighted which means that it's hard for me to see far away and it also depends on what I'm looking at and the size of it and the detail. For example, when I was in school I could never read off of the board or the overhead projector 
Um, even getting really close to the board, it didn't help me. So if I actually wanted to read off the board, I would have to be like literally inches away from it, like maybe two or three inches away to be able to read what is written on the board or the overhead projector. And of course, you know, the overhead projector, the print is a lot smaller, so that complicates things even more. And back in, you know, high school, middle school, elementary school, not a lot of people really understood that. But what I really needed was a note taker because this is another thing where my autism and my visual impairment collided with each other because it would be, even if I had the technology, which I did, I had the technology that I could point a camera to the board and it would come up on the screen and I could read it. But it was so difficult to keep up because the teacher would go so fast, you know, because I, I, I'm a lot slower and it's hard to keep up with, um, with a normal speed at a lot of times. What I really needed though was a note taker or a video camera that would actually record footage from the, um, the board. And then I could go back and watch it later and then basically take notes later because I couldn't keep up. But I couldn't really explain that to people. And this was also back before I knew I was autistic. But I mean, for me, it depends on what I'm trying to look at and the size of it, the detail and all of that. I'll give you examples in upcoming episodes because there are some things that I could see in the distance and other things I can't. It just depends. And I can just give you examples and show you what I'm talking about. I am also low light deficient, which means I have trouble seeing in dim lighting. And I cannot, I mean, no one really can, no one can see in the dark, but I can't see in dim lighting very well. And unless I know the place really well, it's really hard for me to navigate and I get a little nervous. And again, I think that's also where my autism comes into play as well because I get very uneasy and anxious. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I have trouble seeing in low lighting. Which brings me to my next issue, and that is that my eyes take forever to adjust from bright lighting. Like when I come in from outside and it's really sunny out, my eyes take forever to adjust. And I know that everyone has that issue, but for me it takes longer, and because I can't see very well, it makes things even worse for me because everything looks really dark and I can barely see anything at all. Sometimes all I can see are lights and like very, very dim lighting for me. It's it's very, like, if you're asking me to, to find my way around a room when I've just come in from the sunlight outside, I'm gonna be like, um, I can't see and I'm gonna be like bumping into everything. So I guess for me, just you know, just be patient because it's probably gonna take maybe 20 minutes or more for my eyes to adjust. You know, for some people it takes maybe five minutes. For me, it takes a lot longer. Another visual impairment that I have is I don't have great peripheral vision. I can't really see that much out of the side of my eyes. Everything looks kind of... I, I don't really know how to explain it, but I guess I can explain it by saying, you know, like if I see a light out the side of my eye, it looks like a little explosion sometimes. And when I was little, it used to scare me a little bit, and I'm like, um, what the heck? But, you know, I'm pretty used to it by now. I guess every now and then I might get a startle, but I think that's probably where my autism comes in because I startle easily, but anyway. And also another issue that I have that I am actually kind of embarrassed about, it's, um, it's called nystagmus, and it's where my retina is kind of messed up, and it causes my eyes to move around and bounce around and roll around. It's kind of embarrassing for me because some people might think that I'm rolling my eyes at them or some people might say to me stop bouncing your eyes or just point it out to me and it's it's one of it's just one of those insecurities that I have um, if you guys can see my eyes moving around I'm I swear I am not rolling my eyes at you I can't help it but it's it's kind of embarrassing when it gets pointed out unless you know someone understands that it's part of my visual impairment but if someone's asking me stuff like um why are you rolling your eyes or why are your eyes shaking you know it's it's involuntary it's stuff that I can't really control and you know when I was little and this was again this was before my grandparents really understood 
but my granddad would tell me stop balancing your eyes because it's bad for you and stuff and this was before I could really explain I can't help it and now he understands that I can't you know I, I can't really control it sometimes it's more noticeable I guess because they'll move around even more other times maybe it's less noticeable I don't know but it's it's actually it's not just a visual impairment for me it's also an insecurity you guys could probably see what I'm talking about my my eyes moving around a lot another issue I have out of my left eye everything looks kind of blurry and I see halos through my left eye it's not cataracts and it's not glaucoma I actually forgot what it was called but I've had it since I was a teenager and honestly it doesn't really bother me that much it it kind of freaked me out at first when I started to notice it but it really doesn't bother me um, I'm actually kind of used to it I forgot what it's called but I actually do have cataracts in my right eye but it's so minor that I don't even notice it and I was told that because of my visual impairment I'm more likely to get cataracts because you know at a younger age I do have cataracts in my right eye but I don't really I don't really notice it because it's that minor and it may or may not become an issue let's hope that it doesn't because I really really don't want to get eye surgery because I'm such a now I'm going to talk about some of the things that I can see and still talk about some of the things that I can't so when I'm looking at a person I can see your face I can see your eyes your nose your mouth your cheeks you know all the basics I can see your hair I could see your body, I can see your clothes, your, you know, your, your skin, whatever. I can see it, but I can't see the heavy detail. I can't see your eye color. I can see your eyes, but I cannot see the heavy detail. I can't see how big your pupils are. I can't tell what color your eyes are. I cannot decipher your facial expression unless it's really, really, really obvious. Like. Like if you have your mouth open like, oh my gosh, like like you're surprised or shocked or scared or freaked out, then I could, I could pretty much tell that one of those things is going on with you. Or if you have like a, a toothy smile, I can tell you're smiling. But a lot of times I cannot decipher your facial expressions. I have trouble seeing heavy detail. Like if there's a painting and there's a lot of detail in it or a picture that I'm looking at and there's a lot of detail it's really hard for me to decipher it and I think that's also probably where my autism collides with it because one autistic trait that I struggle with is information processing and I'm gonna talk about that in another episode of my autistic mind but yeah my autism does collide a lot with my visual impairment which is why there are certain kinds of movies that I don't really like to watch. I don't like thrillers or action movies. I don't like horror movies because they're just so complex and so difficult to understand. The storylines are really hard for me to follow and there's just too much visual detail and that you know that just just takes away from the enjoyment of the movie. I much prefer comedy, drama, romance, the much simpler movies that are just a lot easier to understand. And I also want to say that, you know, horror movies, they don't scare me, they just bore me to tears because I can't understand what's going on because there's just too much visual detail and the story is just too complex for me. So yeah, that's where my visual impairment and my autism collide. And there's a lot of other examples that I could give you, but it also explains why there are certain YouTube videos that I don't really enjoy watching. Like some of the channels put out videos that are all visual and you like basically you have to read everything that's on the screen. There's no actual dialogue. No one is reading the content on the screen or talking. I don't like those videos because they're so difficult for me to understand and so difficult. I mean, I can pause the videos and I can read what's written on the screen because I have the technology on my computer to do so, but it takes the enjoyment out and it's such a pain in the butt. And I go to YouTube to be entertained and I go to YouTube to basically enjoy the videos that I'm watching and if I don't enjoy what I'm watching, then you know what's really the point 
But yeah, this is basically the gist of my visual impairment. I'm sure there are some things that I miss, some things that I haven't talked about in this video, but I will talk about in future episodes. I am probably going to take my camera outside and maybe show you some examples of things in nature that I can and can't see. I'm going to show you around my technology and how it works and how it helps me. And yes, sometimes I do walk with a cane. Not all the time though, but sometimes I do in strange places that I've never been because it lets people know I can't see very well. I'm really excited to dive deeper into this because I might learn more about myself as well because I know that I've learned a lot about my autism when I have done videos about it and done research about it and heard from other autistic people who have similar issues and I'm like, yes, I have that issue too or I have that autistic trait. So yeah, um, I guess if you, if you want to see more if you want to learn more about my visual impairment and maybe other people who have a similar issue with their eyes, disability, whatever, um, yeah, subscribe and share this video. Maybe this will register with someone else, you know, and that's basically it for now. So, bye!